Hey, welcome back. Good to be with you guys. All right, let's let's look at the markets. Let's see what's going on. So you have the Dow Jones. The Dow Jones is up today, about 323 points. It's at 27,151. Let's look at some of the other items. Gold. Gold is above 2,000. It's at 2,045. Let's look at silver. Silver is at 26.84. Okay, so silver's up. Let's look at Brent Oil. Brent Oil is up to 45. Okay, remember for our RAX 2020 budget, they were projecting Brent Oil, I believe it was at 56. So that's something we need to keep our eyes on is where Brent Oil is as we kind of hit the second half of September, okay? Because that is when they might tentatively be implementing some type of budget. So we're curious to see where oil is, okay, during that period, because that could be very telling and revealing to us, okay? And um, let's look at where the U.S. dollar is. The U.S. dollar is down. The U.S. dollar is down to 92.618, 612 now, okay. So anyway, so the U.S. dollar is down. Remember, uh, factual evidence shows and suggests that the U.S. may be transitioning the U.S. dollar now to becoming asset-backed. I'm not saying gold-backed. I'm saying asset-backed. That's why they might be right now starting to raise the price of gold and silver to bring those up and remember not too long ago the do- just in the last few months the dollar was at, at at record highs okay now they brought the dollar down if they are going to transition the dollar to becoming asset backed with the dollar maxed out a few months ago they would have had to have brought it down so that way once it's officially asset backed it'll raise up again okay and then second um, notice how I said asset backed Basel three compliance states that, um, from the BIS bank that countries can back the value of their currency with both precious metals and foreign currencies. Remember back on January 10th, when Laura Ingram interviewed Donald Trump, Donald Trump stated, he said, we, the U S have $35 billion worth of Iraq's money okay so so if they're going to use the dinar as part of the asset backing to the dollar that would mean the the uh, the whole process of transitioning the dollar to becoming asset backed has to be synchronized and timed with Iraq's rate change okay i want to stress that to you in order for them to transition the us or to Transition the U.S. dollar to becoming asset-backed. It has to happen around the timing of the rate change itself. And notice how, notice how in in this current quarter we're in, Iraq announced to us the all of the white paper, which is the reforms. Okay, and during that same exact quarter, in the U.S., gold and silver have started to rise. I don't think that's coincidence, guys. Just want to point that out to you, okay? That's that's not coincidental. There's a much bigger plan of picture to this, okay? There's a there's a full reset happening right before us. All right, let's get into the facts. They told us that the final payment to Kuwait would be happening in 2020. And notice, remember I told you guys I spoke with my Iraqi contact, and this year of 2020 this is the first year iraq has and is transitioning to a new fiscal period remember i showed you guys an article i think it was last week might have been a week and a half ago where iraq came out and said that they're going to submit their white paper reforms to parliament in september i want to stress that to you the only reason they would be submitting the reforms to parliament in september is because they they have the funding for those has to get approved by parliament. Okay? And the reason they would submit it in September, okay, for financial approval would be because that that further confirms 
that October is the start of the second half of their fiscal year. Okay, they're telling you that. They're showing you that factually to confirm it. Anyway, so again, from last year, Iraq told us they were going to satisfy and and completely pay off their their um, war obligations to Kuwait as of this year. And again, that's that's why Iraq has transitioned to a new fiscal year this year. So anyway, so so the fact that yesterday Iraq put this article out just further confirms that as of this year, they will be satisfying all of their financial obligations and war reparations to the country of Kuwait. So here they're just saying that the the full amount that they've paid has amounted to $177 billion, and they've paid that over the over the last many years. So, so the whole invasion started on August 2nd of 1990, and um, the value of the compensation from the Iraqi invasion in Kuwait amounted to $177.6 billion of which the United Nation approved $37.2 billion for Kuwait. Okay, so so that's that's what Iraq has had to pay back to Kuwait. Okay, we don't need to read the whole article. There's no point. Um, And then as you guys have noticed from the since the beginning of this year, Iraq has been showing you they've been having meetings with Baghdad and Erbil, which is also Kurdistan. Okay, and they're even I think it was a within the last two weeks, there was an article that actually came out by the U.S. government and the U.S. government said they fully support a comprehensive agreement between Erbil and Baghdad. See, right now, guys, you have a lot of gurus that keep coming out telling you soon, soon, soon on this. Okay, they keep telling you soon, 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 but they don't tell you. Okay, okay. Everyone keeps saying soon, but what is the real true thing we're waiting for? That's what you guys need to know. It's right here. Kurdistan and Baghdad have to resolve their differences and reach a comprehensive agreement. They don't have stability without without that. They can't work together. They've got to be able to work together and have and achieve stability before the Trump administration will allow them to go international. That's why, like I said, within the last two weeks, the U.S. government came out saying, hey, we, the U.S., support a comprehensive agreement between Baghdad and Kurdistan, okay? The, even the U.S. is telling you they've got to have that before they'll allow them to go international. And don't forget, the end of September finishes the first half of their current fiscal year, and 10-1 October starts the second half. So if they're going, if, I'm not saying they will, I'm saying if, okay? If they're going to change the rate at all, in the year of 2020 right now, it has to happen at the end of September. Otherwise, if it's not going to happen this year, we're probably most likely going to be waiting until uh, around their next, the start of their next fiscal year, guys, which would be pretty much exactly when Kuwait did theirs around the end of March, okay? But again, those are just opinions. You Opinions don't mean anything until these facts come to fruition, okay? We've got to see Baghdad and um, Kurdistan reach a comprehensive agreement. That is a that is a must and a requirement. You guys are the best. Enjoy yourselves and have a great and wonderful day.